Allie. There must have been some reason for David doing this cruel and stupid thing. <laughs> Can't you tell me exactly what happened? He, he just locked the door, that's all. But you're trembling. There must be more to it than that. There isn't. Please, there isn't. David, come in here. There's something very strange going on, and I want to know exactly what it is. David, did you lock Hallie in this room? Yes, ma'am. But why? Can't you see you frightened her? I didn't mean to. That's right, Mrs. Stoddard. I was being silly. Now, please, Hallie, I don't want you to make apologies for David. Why did you do it? Well, it was only a game. A game? I can't believe my ears. Do you realize what a cruel and stupid thing you did? Yes, ma'am. I can't imagine what kind of person would do a thing like that. Can you? No. Well, game or no game, I'm shocked and disappointed. Hallie is our guest. And we're supposed to do everything we can to make her life pleasant and comfortable while she's here. Now. I'm sorry. I, I, I want you to apologize to Hallie. Please, Mrs. Stoddard, it was my fault as much as his. I was playing the game, too. I'm sorry, Hallie. You don't know how sorry I truly am. Yes, I do, David. I know you would never do anything to hurt me. Well, off to bed, both of you. And David, I don't want to find you outside this room again tonight. Is that clear? Yes. I'll be safer. Having him in here alone, away from strangers. Well, good night, both of you. David, strangers, what, what does she mean? Do you think she knows? I don't know. Quentin said something about strangers earlier. Well, we've got to be careful. They mustn't ever find out. I wish they would, but they won't, ever, because we won't tell them. a flag. Pirate's flag. That wasn't there before. No, it wasn't. I know it wasn't. Then who put it there? I don't know. I don't want to know. No. What is it? Oh, nothing, nothing. What are you reading? Oh, it's just a diary that uh, I found for Julia. Oh, I'd like to see it. Oh, it's uh, just some <laughs> ravings uh, by a mad ancestor of ours. His name is uh, Quentin Collins, <laughs> of course. Uh, he happens to be a great grand uncle of mine. No, I am curious. Now, it's all rather ridiculous, honest. May I? The entry? is the same date as today, but it's 1840. Yes. Is this what you were reading? Yes. What does it mean? Exactly what it says, I suppose. Tomorrow, we bury Carrie and Todd. strangers to trouble his day. The day is over and nothing happened. He's all right. And I thank God for it.
Can't go in there. I must see them. I must be with them. <laughs> Elizabeth, we did all we could. dream, I know. Yes. A horrible-looking man led us down the stairs. I know. Please, I know. Who was he? Who was he? David, look! in my dream. How could you be in my dream and be here? Don't smile at me. S stay away. Don't. Don't. No! No! David. David, what is it? What's wrong? Tell me. He's been here, hasn't he? He's been in this room. I, I can feel that he's been here. Who's been in this room? You tell me, David. Nobody's been in this room except for me. Then why did you scream? 
I had a nightmare. Huh? A terrible, terrible nightmare. Tell it to me. It was, it was about a war. Don't lie to me, David. What makes you say that I'm lying? What right have you got? David, we've always told each other the truth. I am telling the truth. I had a nightmare. You had a dream. Was there a man in your dream, David? There were lots of men in my dream. I mean a particular man with dark hair and cold, evil eyes. What makes you think that you can describe a man from my dream? It's awfully weird of you. Just tell me, David. There was nobody like that. You're sure? There were soldiers. Lots and lots of soldiers. And tanks. And airplanes. And, and bombs. They were bombing Collinwood, and I was in it. And that's the truth. Is it? Yes. David, if... If you're keeping something from me. David, don't turn your back to me. It is very important that I know if anything unusual is going on. What's so unusual about a dream? Nothing. Or a kid having one. I can't do anything around here with one of you jumping on my back, asking me about unusual things. Well, the unusual things around here are you and Barnabas and Quentin. David, just be calm. No, you calm down. Pretty soon, somebody's going to come in here and say, David, why aren't you asleep yet? How could I go to sleep in a house like this with all of you people crawling all, all over the halls? All right, David, I'll let you go to sleep. Thank you. I hope you don't have another nightmare. So do I. I didn't tell her anything. Nothing at all. Because, because I know you wouldn't want me to. Listen, if I promise never to tell, will you not make me have dreams like that? Will you? Daphne, what's happening in this house? Now, you could tell me, if only you would. I've lived in this place for so many years. Why has it taken you so long to come to me? Why have you waited so long? Oh, when are you going to tell me? What's wrong? Daphne, why the sudden change? You always expect me to come when you want me. And when I do, you dismiss me as a child. But I'm not going to let it go any further. You're going to tell me why. All of the wives. Or else I'm going to do what I should have done before all of this started. Why am I always so willing to give you another chance? But I am going to give you just one more chance.
Sherlock. Reading your own work? Mrs. Stoddard was puzzled by a phrase of mine. Yes. A loved one will meet a stranger. Have you figured out who the loved one is? Well, if I do, and when I do, I'll tell Mrs. Stoddard, not you, Doctor. I seem to be intruding. I understand the way you feel, but we're all very concerned. I've been reading some articles about you. Oh, a file on me. As I have some friends in New York who are fascinated with the occult. The McClellans, did you know them? Well, they sent me these articles. I'm very impressed. You've had a great deal of excellent publicity. And you've made many, many predictions that have come true. You seem to be quite in demand. You're surprised. No. Only that you are here at Collinsport. Only that you're planning to stay in Collinsport. Why are you? Do you consider yourself a friend of mine, Dr. Hoffman? I barely know you. Exactly. Well, why should I tell you something that even my closest friends don't know? Mm-hmm. I chose to come to Collinsport. I chose to stay in Collinsport. Do I need your permission for that, Doctor? Of course not. Exactly. Because I don't think I'd get it. Oh, no, you're wrong. You would indeed. If you would use your talent to help us. What makes you think I have it? Because the other day you were playing the piano and you played a tune that you said you made up. But you know that there is only one place you could have learned that tune. You know, Dr. Hoffman, I heard somewhere that there are probably only 12 basic tunes. Isn't it possible that... I hit upon one that you had heard before. Mr. Shaw, there are spirits in this house. Every time those spirits appear, that music is heard. They are very vengeful spirits. And they want to destroy this place. How do you know? Oh, I know. I know. And they will start with the children. You can see the horror in that. Why won't you help us? Why are you willing to have them destroyed? I'm destroying nothing. You are. You're not helping us because of your silence and your evasions. If you said one word to Mrs. Stoddard, she would take the children from this house. I have that responsibility. Me, a stranger. You know, something tells me that that you're imagining all this, Doctor. And I've seen women like you before. Hysterical women who imagine ghosts all over the place when there are none. You'll excuse me if I don't help you, Dr. Hoffman. <laughs> 